Okay, so I'm gonna have to speak very quietly because um, I had some feedback in the last video saying that I, I'm, I'm, I'm quite soft and my Asus mic or my headphones, uh, my ROG Deltas, I've had for about a year now, um, they, for some reason when I have to, when I stop a computer again, I have to actually replug them to get my, my detection volume like normalized, if that makes sense. But with the very good side effect of uh, I generally sound quite soft in Discord and on videos and stuff um, and on like uh, TeamSpeak and like MS Teams for university stuff and I hate the way I speak and I think I sound really annoying um, so <laughs> yeah <laughs> um, but anyway so getting to the actual video um, this particular one is sort of like a follow-up but um, more so just uh, like kind of it's a really like hot take though i know a lot of people are going to probably look at this video and be like this is a bunch of nonsense like this is just stupid and um yeah i mean probably probably kind of is not so uh not so easy to argue for um but basically what i'm going to speak about is why i'm not a fan of <laughs> uh, oh i don't want to say it um let's just say intricate tuning features um yeah let's just say that L let's go with that that's a good way to, that's a good one to go with um and i'm gonna i'm gonna use old lake and ryzen um as as well as like any other real like generation it doesn't really matter to be honest i think you could probably use any gen if you want to comet lake um ryzen older lake i mean um and then the other side of it is um, RAM tertiaries, um, RTLs, IOLs, etc. Um, so, yeah, you know, like, um, I don't like uh, intricacies uh, for daily systems, and I only OC for daily. Um, generally speaking <clears throat> if you're going for top scores then for sure max up why because you don't care right so like if you're going for if you're going for 3d mock um which is not the it's not the the high end or the the enthusiast um the true enthusiast one it's people go for hw bot more, more often but um if you're going for something like 3d mock which i like because 3d mock is easy with hw bot it's just it's a difficult process to well not difficult but it's more it's more complicated to sign up and validate the results and stuff like that with 3d mock you just run the app you pay for it in steam you have it and then you get your scores bad out it gives you a ranking with your country and you can filter by gpu and it, whatever like it's cool um so and i ran 3d mock um if i go to my profile um and keep in mind i'm i'm not sponsored and i'm not super wealthy so i have to work with what i can get um so when i can get some some side work like i can save up and i can get like a nice component i'll i'll do um oh great my my driver does that sometimes um so when i can get something nice or upgrade um i try to when i can and um if i'm sufficiently within a certain um period of the generation and perhaps when it's winter or colder where i live because sometimes it's quite warm especially right now today i can tell you right now it's 31 degrees in Stellenbosch in south africa and um yeah you, know, you would never benchmark a day like this uh, it's a great day for stress testing because if your pc is stable today gaming and in 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 like burn test and hdi with your ram and everything it's like you're stable all the time because you're you're testing when it's warm um so i'll i'll I, my results aren't too amazing, but uh, if I go to, um, it's not Hall of Fame actually, no, just more results. I wouldn't, I wouldn't land on you. I don't have. Um, let me just say one thing. Like, and this is something I'm gonna say just to, uh, perhaps to someone that's like an aspiring um, benchmark or someone who really loves like hardware but never ends up. Because I know the feeling. Because when I started out, I was, I was still like grade eleven. Like back when I would run 3D mock and benchmarks back then, like Unigen. Like, you wouldn't get close to anyone's score, and it's like, you feel disheartened. Like, you wonder 
like why and the truth is like if i come to this um if i just use fire strike as an example like you have to keep in mind that this is this first of all is amd's um in-house design card it's their it's their lc um their lc is the best bin card you can get it in eve tech so i actually email so i'm just gonna say i don't really care um i don't give a shit i emailed this company to try and coerce them to sell me this card when it was being sold in the pre bolts and amd weren't selling them retail so i kind of knew they weren't making any sales in these because no one in africa buys amd stuff so i was like listen i'll give you like 30 grand if you give me this card um like can you just give me this card because i know you're not like i didn't say it like that but i said just just are you willing to sell me this card and they were like no so i was like okay fine cool um no no worries and then they ended up selling it for like 29k on sale on level up and they never got a sale for it this is way too expensive um no one should ever buy this card in africa um if you really want to buy 6900 xc just buy this like um because it's um like you would just buy one of these right so you would never buy that card it's kind of pointless um and the gaming z was available here it is uh, a couple days ago for a similar price and this is the xtx hd as well so you can tell by the clock speed um generally speaking the xtx hd is i don't think that they really have massive variation but i am a firm believer that amd bin the best silicon to their own cards um because i own the reference uh 6900 xt and let me tell you that card performed clock speed wise way better than the red devil i have right now and then the the merc i had a few months ago but so this card um is the one this man is using and this card is almost impossible to find for the longest time um you could buy a pre-build if you had the money and then just sell the parts off and then just keep this card right um but warranty is an issue because i don't believe this i don't know where you would rma it because this card i don't believe it has a retail channel so i don't know how you would go about rmaing this card i don't know what the warranty would look like because this is well, this is meant to go into a pre-build and then amd allowed the aib to start selling them because they weren't getting sales on them because the pricing was too high in the pre-builds so I, I i don't really know if this is even safe to purchase for most people because like could you rma it what would the process look like i don't know i'm not trying to like rag on eve tech i'm just saying i don't know what it'd be what would it, what it'd be like who would you go to like who would you rma with is this like xfx is xfx is called are they gonna rma for you i guess so i i don't know so but if you had this card what what most of the xocs would do obviously just like rip this off because um as good as a single um this would be a very good cooler i think for i i think you could get into 3d mox top 100 um on this cooler in a cold day like a five degree day in Stellenbosch in South Africa or like a five deg degree winter day anywhere you live um unless you live in like Saudi Arabia in that case I feel sorry for you um you're just not gonna overclock unless you're super wealthy maybe you can just like air condition that shit you know um <laughs> I'll bring that ambient down from like 35 to 5 degrees bro just burn that fucking aircon bro just fucking like juice that thing <laughs> but <laughs> anyway so <laughs> like um this card the silicon in this card is probably better than the silicon in this card even though this card has a significantly better boost lock i would i would be pretty confident that this card would boost higher than this card i just have a feeling um <clears throat> i think this card can hold its boost better because it has the uh, slightly better cooling solution and it has a vrm fan which is quite nice um that fan does cool the vrms by the way that doesn't cool the the gpu itself it cools the the power delivery <clears throat> so what makes this card special is that it has 18 gigabits per second chips uh samsung chips and obviously as you can see from 3d mark uh, the amd cards are absolutely fucking curb stomping the nvidia cards and i'm just going to say it the the, the 6900 xc is faster than 390 i've owned both and let me tell you this card is way faster like it's not even a fucking contest I, i'm being serious in rasterization like in average like okay i'm gonna boot up this game i'm gonna boot up this game i'll boot up this game this game this game whatever game you want boot up a game rasterization no ray tracing the amd cards are absolutely like lightning quick and the scaling is insane like you drop the video settings you get more frames then video cards you drop the video settings the card just does less work at the same frame rate it doesn't make any fucking sense now i will say brs do benefit in video cards because with nvidia cards you get number one more bus width number two you get the driver that has this magical feature where it can actually scale up your core count and your cpu and and leverage more cpu resources which amd's cards don't really do um but my argument to that would be what's the point because why would you want to buy a card that can just do slightly better in brs and like apex and like maybe pubg and like maybe warzone in some areas versus a card that does better in other areas on those same maps 
and then with the added benefit of just being faster in every other fucking situation besides ray tracing and by the way ray tracing as nice as it is as it is the only game where ray tracing actually makes a tangible difference to your experience is this game this game right here i played in 2019 on a 2080 the first time i owned a ray tracing card was a year after they released because i quit pcs for a year to bodybuild and during the end of the 2019 year i i had saved up enough money that i just bought the pc again and i just was able to afford a second hand uh, 2080 which was really fun to to own and play this game particularly with the the fucking reflections in the windows and stuff it was amazing and the debris like the ray tracing the debris was amazing but playing with ray tracing on crisis 2 remastered 3 well i haven't tried in 3 but it's the same same game basically as 2 remastered um <clears throat> the ray tracing on doom is absolute garbage uh sorry davis but absolutely stupid um Ray tracing on this game, I can't even see. Like, on God, I can't see it. I can't see it in this game either. Um, yeah, so ray tracing is... I mean, it's there. I don't know what to tell you. Like, if you want to use it, use it. But, like, I probably wouldn't use it. It's just a waste of frames. Um, so, back to the actual topic. Um, unfortunately, with benchmarking, you need a certain buy-in to get to a certain ranking. You can't really just... Dominic to edit this shit where you're just like it's all about the guy behind the wheel you know not about the card the car itself you know it's not about the GPU it's about the tuner you know <laughs> no 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 you're not getting 21c on your card without a beefy custom loop I'm sorry you're not getting 6.7 gigahertz on the CPU without Allen 2 I'm sorry um you know I, what I would assume this is I'm, I'm assuming this RAM is like 38c12 or some shit this is not this is not 38c14 now I can tell you that much this this dude did not use some like normie ass config this is some like 1.7 volt like 38 c12 on this bitch i'm i'm certain of it and i bet the only reason he's a 3800 is because you can't do gear one easily on aces sports past 3800 <laughs> so that's his limitation dude this guy would have been at like 4200 c14 like on no more than that better than that on god like but okay so you need good b die first of all this is a good bin of b die he's not doing 38 c12 on crap b die first of all second of all he needs allen 2 not not everyone can afford allen 2 or the fact that using allen 2 and configuring a set of four allen 2 could inherently result in you making a mistake because everyone makes mistakes all humans are fucking clumsy we all have the same bodies like just because this guy is extremely good overclocker doesn't mean he's a a, a fucking superhuman right so what if what if sebi you know did something while setting up his system for allen 2 and he broke component you need to be able to afford to break shit when you xoc so um that's the first that's the first uh thing i want to talk about is uh in terms of um results themselves and and like benchmarking because i feel like it's important to say you should never um you should never really compare yourself to others um comparisons thief of joy you should always just get the best you can get and do the best you can do within reason um, with what you can afford to spend and the time you have at your disposal. Uh, but generally speaking, for benchmarks, right? Granted you have, because let me say this first, if you don't have adequate hardware to even get in striking distance of what you want to achieve, don't fucking bother. Like, do not bother sitting there tuning your RTLs and your IOLs one by one to train them in one by one and then have to worry about like vf curves and like perhaps or like maybe um if you want to use the the per like the per core cluster like overclocking on, on older lake where you're like one core does 5.5 or i guess some people will do like six if they use some some exotic cooling and then like whatever you get the point don't waste your time if you're not you know really up there like don't, 12700k don't bother like why what's the point um if you own anything under 12900k with a good bin, and I'm going to say good bin as well because that's important. If you don't have like SP110 or whatever, don't waste your time. If you don't have a good XTX H690 XT, don't waste your fucking time, right? If you're not going to if you're not going to do well, don't waste your time trying to just get like top 500. There's no point. There's absolutely no point. If you can't get top 100 or it's top 50 or something, don't waste your time trying to XOC. Um or not XOC but oc i guess you could say xoc i don't fucking know oc whatever like don't waste your time trying to chase the the benchmark number if you aren't gonna win like don't like that's genuine life advice if you're not gonna if you're not gonna win at something and competing in itself is not gonna benefit you in any way but it will hinder you in terms of time and resources lost then maybe just don't do it like you know like so so that's the first thing now look at my slow ass internet processing hd 
poor Dane. Anyway, so um, so especially if you can't even get a good score with the hardware at your disposal and the money you have to spend, because like I said, it's money that you have to have at your disposal to be able to break shit. It's money you have to have to be able to acquire shit that can't be bought all the time. Um, it's money you have to have to be able to bin certain parts because you have to buy multiple of them to make sure you're actually using um, a part that is adequate enough in terms of quality to achieve what you want to achieve. If you can't satisfy those that criteria, then like, then um, don't don't do intricacies. Don't. There's no point. Like frame chasers, like frame chasers has a similar opinion, right? With all due respect to him, <clears throat> he goes overboard. So he he kind of makes you uh, he he kind of um, suggests you do almost nothing, like just game, right? Like just game. Well, you paid for this shit and you like tuning, so just because you can't break records doesn't mean you shouldn't try and at least be decent, right? Like. Just because you can't be top one uh, doesn't mean you don't want the fastest PC in your city. Right? So, um, and, and this is not necessarily just like a thing where it's like a dick measuring or whatever. Like, this is just like, it's it's nice to know, I guess. It's nice to achieve. It's just nice to, to um, if you like this stuff, it's like, you generally just want to have something to show for it, right? So it's it's fair, but that's my first premise on why I don't like, uh, or my first take on why I don't like intricacies because there's not really any point. Now this is too far. Like when 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 Juve says don't uh, don't set secondaries. Oh fuck no, fuck no. What what the fuck? What the fuck? What? No, fuck that, no, fuck that, dude. No. If you have the time, you have the skills, right? Set the fucking secondaries. I'll give you the fucking secondaries. I will give you them. Here you go, here you go. My fucking treat to you guys. 3800 C14, you want to You want to do 38 C14? What? B die? Samsung, you, you want it? Here you go, dude. 1.5 to 1.5, 2 volts, right? Get a cooling solution. 3800. 14, 14, 14, or 14, 15, 15, and if you have really shit IMC, 14, 16, 16, right, because you'll end up doing 14, 16, 16, fine, right, um, TRAS, it's going to be TRCD plus TR, uh, TRTP uh, plus 2, that rule still applies to DDR, um, DDR, uh, 4, so burst length, fucking equals 2, burst length plus, uh, plus TRTP plus, um, TRCD. So, so this would be, and then they give you the secondaries, obviously. So you'll do TRDL. Uh, so S will be four. Uh, TRDL uh, will be four six, right? You'll do TWTR. Uh, TWTR spelled in. Goodness sake. Um, fuck me. L uh, eight. You'll do TWR between 10 and 14, whatever you want. Like, whatever you feel like testing, I don't give a shit. Uh, TRFC, you'll do, like, between 270. If your kit's a trooper and 320, you shouldn't go above 320, I don't think. Uh, and then TREFI, you'll do, say, 245,000. Don't do 65, it's not a good idea. Um, you might end up late erroring, and you don't want to give yourself a headache, so just, just, just stick to 45,000. Um, and then TRTP, you're going to want to do like between, I don't know, like 6 and 8, I guess. You wouldn't want to do 12, um, 10. So, yeah, um, so that, and then TRC is obviously, uh, TRC is obviously, uh, TRAS plus, um, and the cool thing is with b and and DDR4, you generally you follow these rules and it always just works. You don't, you don't have to worry about like, oh, it's not going to train. No, it'll train. It'll train just fine. Don't you worry. Um, uh, SR, assume like 1.2, uh, 5, uh, VCC IO, uh, and SA, um, DR, assume like 1.3 VCC IO and SA. 
and there you go done right that's that's more or less done um i would say maybe um maybe go 1.2 1 1.35 if you have a crap imc i mean i'm sorry you might end up 1.35 but i i doubt it i i think you'd roll over before i think 1.3 is probably yeah i'd say 1.3 yeah, i mean yeah so there you go um uh there you go don't say secondaries out don't worry i'll them for you you know where you go you're welcome got you i got you homie uh oh yeah t416 right so don't set your secondary. It's too much time. There you go. Did I saved you all the hours? Don't you worry. I've done this so many times. So many different B die kits. It's the same fucking shit every single time. Literally, just it always works, dude. Um, <laughs> so um, yeah. There you go. That's your that's your uh, default B die, right? Um, and now for DDR5, I, the other video has. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna go over the BD, the DDR5 secondaries again because I I I showed you them in the last video. Um. Generally, with secondaries, um, if you can't train one, it's more than likely that your IMC is kind of run out of its its um, headroom. Like, it's kind of stressed too much. I don't actually know how it works, to be honest. It's kind of weird. I spoke to a guy who had an issue where, like, he couldn't do a certain configuration of, like, TRCD and TRP and TRAS and TRC. And then, like, but if he had changed the one time, he could do the other configuration because, it's like, I guess it, like, relieved some stress in his IMC. It was weird shit, but it does. Uh, it's literally a thing. Um... Oh, by the way, please do never, never set your fucking TRAS like 21. It's stupid. It doesn't work. Like, it's, it's 20. It's, it can't, like, most boards can't be set below 26. But, like, with DDR4, it's TRCD plus, uh, TR, but TRCDRD plus TRTP plus 2. And not, not WR, by the way. You're going to rise and you can set, like, 8 WR. No, no. TRCDRD, which is never going to go super low, plus trtp plus two that's the rule like don't don't do below that there's no point um and you have no reason to because tras as far as i know doesn't even really scale like tras is performance scaling it, you don't actually even see performance benefits like i've seen regression dropping tras because if you fuck it i'll show you like i'm not gonna i'm not gonna keep this a secret this is why i learned this this uh about tras but basically what the hell am i doing where studio this is a thing what i have no idea what the fuck i'm doing okay Oh fuck, did I just whatever I don't care. Um so if I go to favorites, um let me just I'm actually scared. Please tell me it's still processing. Uh, uh watch ASMR I know. Um Oh thank god it's still processing. So um if I go to favorites I'll show you um Wait, where is it now? It's somewhere down there. Is it gone? Oh, yeah, it is. I'm, I'm just blind. Okay, so this one explains uh, TRAS quite well. Um, I'll link it if I remember. No, I'll, I'll link it. I'll link it um, in this video. But, yeah, but, but from what he says, but I, I've, I've seen it too. Like, it doesn't really affect performance in the way you think it would so i'm not terribly sure why people floor it but whatever so okay tertiary is especially with alder lake especially um with regards to alder lake so by the way um you can get away with them you can get away with uh oh, Why, why do I say this? Because I've never, and by the way, this is not just me saying this, because I've, the reason why I, I collated what I said in the last video and why I'm saying it now um, is because I've run into so many people on the forums and on Facebook groups and on Discord servers that have had the exact same experience I've had and seen the exact same shit I've seen. And I've noticed that not that many benchmarks have been run thus far with high speed ddr5 now, i realize why is because like i said in the last video when you go too high with frequency which is what you need to get the performance out of ddr5 to extract the performance out of ddr5 you have to push the frequency up um and i've noticed that you um like 
getting your IMSC to reboot like stably and not like like lose its glasses and and forget how to read the the data like your IMC oftentimes will just misplace its glasses you know it'll just like fucking will boot the PC up and it just won't know what's what it's doing it'll be like I need my glasses like I can't see the fucking data like what the hell and it'll just blue screen right so um <laughs> so I I don't there is not a fucking world where I can recommend setting these for for all the like I just <laughs> just can't like there's not a fucking world I, and 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 same with this dude like this shit like dude I know I'm gonna if if someone from the XOC forums or someone from like Asus's fucking engineering BIOS team or whatever fucking ever sees this which they likely never will they ever see this they're gonna like I can only see that comments like just fucking paragraphs long just like. Dude, you have no idea what you're talking about, dude. It's like, it's bullshit. It's like, <laughs> and, uh, and this shit, dude. Like, oh my gosh, bro. I hate it. Like, um, there's, there's no reason. There's no reason to try and do this for daily. Um, there's no reason to run this daily. But you can. Like, you can. Let me just say. You can do whatever you want. Like, always. Always, always, always. You can do whatever you want. There's, there's no... Um, there's no world where I'm allowed to dictate to, to tell you what you can do with the stuff you spend your money on. And that's why whenever someone tells me I don't agree with you, whatever, I sometimes step back and say, you know what? Fine, that's true. Like, I'm not going to tell you what to buy for... If you don't like the cooler I'm recommending you, you don't like the motherboard I'm recommending you, you don't like the RAM I'm recommending you, you don't like the fact that it's RGB, you don't like the fact that I want you to run this voltage or you want to run a higher voltage or you want to th you think you can run a higher clock, fine, I step back. Even my best friends, I'll step back, I'll be like, it's fine. Like, whether you're my best friend or a random person I met online, if you don't feel like taking my advice, I'll never force it on you. Because you know what? You paid for your shit. So if you, and, and you do your own job on your computer, like you do your own, whatever work you got to do, whatever university assignments you got to do, um, whatever, you know, whatever you got to do, whatever, like, um, you know, uh, Zoom meetings you've got to do with your work colleagues or something. Um, whatever you're doing, it's on you. It's your money. It's your life. Um... If you don't care what your computer does, or if you don't, if you're willing to risk whatever, do it. Like it's up to you. Um, you can you can run whatever the fuck you want. You can use whatever fucking stress test you want, dude. You can use Pro 95. You can use Burn Test. Use OCCT. Use R20. Use fucking CS:GO if you fucking feel like. Like, do whatever you want. It's your computer, right? But if you want my advice on what I think is, uh, well, that sounds that sounds kind of self-absorbed. If you um, if you uh, will be willing to hear out what I think is is a relatively good middle ground for everyone, then understand where I'm coming from. So, first off, um, um, this is something I learned from Bullzoid because I actually didn't have any idea this is a thing. But um, not just does like when a load hits your CPU or load releases on the CPU or GPU, whatever core, whatever core or, or uh, semiconductor doing the work with natural VDroop, not only is natural VDroop a, um, a natural VDroop and then obviously the, the side effect of having LLC, not only are those two phenomena um, a cause for concern, but also the actual switching of your CPU frequency will change um, voltage regulation and actually affect transients. I had no idea. So, that got me to thinking. This whole VF curve thing, I, I haven't looked at it too much, but I've, I I looked at it a little bit. Um, and my only, like, thought that popped into my head immediately was, could you even run this on a, like, a, like, could the average person even run this? Like, bear with me. Like, just, just bear with me. Hold on. Like, let me, let me tell you what I'm, like, trying to say. Like, okay, um, in South Africa, we got fuck all stock, we, and our and our distro prices are absolutely like, <laughs> like a joke. Like this shit makes no sense. So our motherboard selection is horrible, and I'm not even gonna try and like compare um, the pricing and like. So I'm gonna go by Newegg because America. Um, so I'm sure they have Apexes in stock because they suck and they're too expensive. Just kidding. I'm not really kidding. Um, <laughs> the Apex, Apex, Apex. You you buy into um into some like pre-release biases like by the apex dude like you know what you're paying for you're paying for like first hand first class service from like the bios writers because i noticed that asus guys from the apex or the apex guys have like 
they have so many bias revisions because dude like their board is like permanently being worked on where like all of us peasants like with the with this kind of shit just like dude take this bias from 22 december and just have fun with it it's like it's 15 jan dude come on help me out here guys like i know there's a problem with the vrm dude i know there's a problem with the vrm please just fix the voltage regulation oh they won't fix it will they uh but anyway so um if you have the apex um now i'm i think the apex has a one kilo switching frequency right i think it does but i know the apex i think no the apex does the apex has one kilo switching, switching frequency and so does um the z690 extreme uh what the fuck is a nuke so this board does uh not not the i think this one does oh, this one should have it might i think this one does i think this one also has it but most of this one this one will have it for sure because the the x570 had it so so if you know this board this board had it this board's vrm was so good so now if this keep going happening if this is going to keep happening i guess it's fucking balked i don't know so whatever so um this board has one kilo switching frequency so if you so on a video builder once made he tested this board, um, which I've never owned, and with this board, he found that even running, like, you could viably run a crazy LLC setting. Why? Because when the load releases, this board is good enough to catch that uh, transition, and it doesn't allow itself to shove a bunch of uh, load line calibration voltage um, at your CPU when it knows it's going to cause a transient high right now, i'm not sure how they code for the stuff on the bio side i don't know how they i don't know how they how they how they program the vrm um according to like they use the i'm, I'm assuming um obviously it's the controller they use and then obviously the the quality power stage but i'm not sure how they actually like work around that stuff it's kind of like above my head it just goes right over my head i have, I have no idea how they work around this stuff but but they they found a way on this board and then I'm assuming also the Apex has it, but a lot of these high-end boards, like the ones that you that you generally get recommended to use when you want to overclock, um, let me just say, like, I don't personally believe that anyone that isn't, like, super wealthy should be buying this. Why? Because, well, first of all, that price is bogus, but this one, this is a legitimate price, right? Now, do I think that you should buy the Apex, if you can, if you live in the US, obviously? If you live in Africa, don't import this shit. Never do that. Like, you're going to get that shit stolen, dude. Pr promise you, like... If you're South African, don't fucking import. Like, no ways. But um, if you're living in America and you can buy this on Newegg and have it delivered to you tomorrow, um, should you buy the Apex? Well, like $720 for what it is. Like like I said, you have first class support from the BIOS team. Your board is always being catered to. They're always trying to improve the memory training and the voltage regulation. They're always trying to fix bugs. You always have like, you, you know, you always have that like first-hand support on the overclocker.net forum and okay, the Apex, and then you also you have like that whole like pre preset for like memory tuning and like presets for like CPU tuning all that stuff and it's cool. But do I believe you should be paying this amount of money for this board? Well, I paid three fifty in dollars in my country for my board. Um, it's the Z690F. Um, I paid effectively half the money. So for double the money, what do I get? I get 24 power stages, right? Versus 16 that I have on my current board. I get 105 amp uh, power stages. Um, I get, uh, I think it's a, uh, they have, yeah, here we go. Yeah, yeah, they, what do they call it this? Whatever, like th this is not what they're actually called, but um, basically the, the caps, like if you can see them in the picture, like these things are like the extremely expensive kind. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think it's an aluminum polymer. I think it is. Yeah, I think it is aluminum polymer. I think it's, yeah. But anyway, whatever. So um, <laughs> uh, this board has the best of the best and it's a great fucking board. Like you get what you pay for. I mean, you get the best quality. The problem is, do you need this quality? Like, do you need 24 power stages? Well... If you're running the 1200K at 6.7 gigahertz on Allen 2, you might need 24 power stages, right? Like, you're probably not going to run a run um, 
the 12 minute okay I, I don't know how much voltage requires to run a 12 uh 6.7 gigahertz but i'm assuming we're talking something in like the 1.8 volt range probably no that's impossible that's that's no that would kill it no uh one point maybe 1.65 to 1.7 volts right like 1.65 maybe 1.6 i don't know something like that i don't know where uh intel 10 nanometer super thin um starts to, to gate break down i think probably around 1.7 I might be completely wrong. I don't know. It might break down to 1.5. I don't fucking know. But the fact that he had it at 6.7 gigahertz tells me he's probably at like 1. Point, at least 1.55 to 1.6 volts, whatever. And I know if you run if you run a exotic cooling, the colder you run, the less voltage required to run um, higher frequencies, obviously. And plus, you're only using it for benchmarks, so you don't have to really worry about like stability. So you're never going to stress test it. So, um, so um, yeah, the CPU. Oh, the, sorry, this motherboard. Um, it's a great motherboard, but for the average person you wouldn't ever require 20 power stages i can tell you right now my 16 power stages at 70 amps dr moss by the way they're dr moss pots they're not even like smart power stages um which shouldn't really matter that much i guess but whatever so my 16 phase well, 16 not, not a phase it's eight phase it's a 16 power stage eight phase ghetto ass vrm um with these dr, DR moss 70 amp power stages <laughs> um can run my 1200k at 1.3 volts at uh full load in something like burn test or probably at like probably at a um like and then i'm assuming prime 5 would run it to like so i think burn test would be like 180 watts 180 amps sorry and i think probably five probably would pull like over 200 right but my vrm doing burn test at like 180 amps to 200 amps is like like 45 fucking degrees like maybe 50 on a warm day but dude like you'd never like what world would that not be enough like, I, I just don't see the point like what would the what would the reason be to have something more powerful than that like why would you require 24 power stages like unless you were going to do like unless you were, obviously if you were going to like do ln2 overclocking well first off then acer would send you the board because you're probably a you're probably a exoc but um if you're the average person doing ln2 then you obviously are you'll buy this board obviously because you need it you need you need to know that you can run you know 1.6 volts through your cpu with the best filtering possible because obviously filtering is important especially when you're trying to keep the voltage down because um the voltage too high could literally result in gate breakdown so you're gonna want to have a board that can literally run your cpu the most optimal so obviously you're gonna buy the apex well, why not uh one dimper, one dimper channel as well um don't be deceived this board's uh maximum memory capabilities are not that um pronounced compared to like the the normal like the normal boards uh I don't know why, but I think the Tachyon does way better than this board, apparently, uh, from what I've heard. Um, and the Unify X as well. Uh, which, in my pick, that, if, I, if I could buy the Unify X, I would. Uh, if, it was, if it was affordable and in my country, I would buy it. Um, I love the design. I always have. Um, so, I, I, I don't think that... Um, I don't think that most people could even run VF. I just don't. Like... If you're the average person and you read online or you watch a video where someone's like, do VF curve, my honest advice to you, don't do it. Like, don't do it. If, if, you, don't own a if you don't own a Tachyon, you don't own a Apex, you don't own a Extreme, you don't own something with extremely, extremely tuned voltage regulation and like just the most jacked up VRM with the most baller controller possible. Like, don't fucking bother. Like, don't waste your time. Because you're going to run into inherent crashes because of, like, transients. Uh, like, uh, no, because of transients, also because of, of um, just general, like, voltage quality. Like, just the, the consistency of the voltage supply. Like, imagine you have a VF curve that's very aggressive. Like, you'll end up in situations where you could just blue screen out of the blue just because your your VRM didn't do a good enough job at that particular moment handling whatever whatever load, um, whatever release of load was, was occurring. Um, I don't think this is applicable. I don't. I think the VF curve is a good feature if you're if you're an owner of one of these boards, because um, if you have one of these boards, argue arguments for like argument would probably be that, well, if I have the board, then obviously I do VF curve because why not? I paid for it, so I might as well use the VRM to its fullest capacity, right? Oh, okay, fair enough. Cool. So, how do I maximize the Apex's VRM? I'll do crazy shit with it because I paid for it. So, you're a peasant. You didn't buy the nice board, so you don't get VF curve. Okay, fair enough. That's that's fair. But I don't like how I've seen like so many people online these days like talking about like VF curve and like ratio seeing and like 
some people have like baller stuff and some people have like Z690 A Pros. Like, if you go to Z690 A Pro, you shouldn't be doing ratio seeing. For the simple reason that, um, I'll get into that now. So, so that's VF curve to me. For to me, I just don't believe it's something you would pursue if you don't have a high end board because how do you how, how do you have confidence that your VRM is able to to properly handle voltage regulation um, well enough to where you won't get like uh, intermittent blue screens? I just don't have the confidence in it um, to see it as a viable option for daily OC. Uh, now ratio OCing. So this one I can easily kind of like um, explain away. When you set a fixed all core ratio, your CPU is running according to the weakest link, the weakest core. So the weakest core with the weakest interconnect between the core and the, and the cache on the E cores and on the P cores, that core is going to cause a crash. Thus, if you set a fixed all core on your E cores and your P cores, you know for a fact that whatever load you run, whatever application you launch, whatever you do, your CPU is able to run whatever you want to do, all core, at that given voltage, at that given frequency, irrespective of one of the cores having a weaker link than another core, and irrespective of the amount of cores leveraged. So, at, and irrespective of which cores are leveraged. So, let me just write that down. So, Like, irrespective of what it leverages um, in Windows, the thread scheduler, uh, what, I think it's called Task Directory, isn't it? Well, it's a, it's a thread scheduler, it doesn't matter. Um, irrespective of which cause, um, of uh, how, how many cores cause, uh, are leveraged, of the variations in... So, um, if you if you watch the previous video, which I'm guessing most people that are watching this one would have, because I'm guessing most people that um, would be willing to watch me are people that know me or like my opinions, because I'm assuming the average person would just click on this. But regardless, um, in the last video, I spoke about like how um, you should OC the DDR5 after the cause, because <sighs> you'd have to... Um, you'd have to work within a certain um, system agent voltage range to get the DDR5 optimal with the IMC, um, or whatever your configuration is optimal with your IMC. Um, and having your RAM unstable or having your, having your CPU OC later on put more of a demand on the system agent rail is a problem because... You don't know what the starting point is. So let's say you let's say you overclock your um, DDR5 first, and you require a certain amount of system agent to run your overclock, and then you require a certain um, what yeah just system agent, and you try you start um, overclocking the E cores and the P cores and the ring, and your ring requires more SA to be stable, and then you're now you're worrying about like okay now the sa um is affecting like like so you're getting crashes on your cpu overclock because your ram overclock has a certain sa typed into it but had you just set the sa to auto or like let's say whatever um overclocked your cpu and then adjusted your your sa for ram then went back to burn test or some other stress test the stress test would have validated both overclocks it would have it would have revalid it would have reassured you that your that your ram was now uh communicating all the imc but not only that the fact that you're running a stress test means it's reaffirming the fact that your your cpu oc is still stable with the ram oc and arguably speaking the cpu oc as long as it's done to a point where it's significant enough is gonna yield in more performance than having your ram juiced that's always been a thing so th this is 
I believe this is valuable. I believe this is valuable. Like this is, to me, um, this does a lot for you because you don't have to worry about which call the thread thread leverages. You don't have to worry about how many cores are leveraged. You don't have to worry about the variations in the quality of the silicon between cores and the interconnect between the cores and the ring. So, what happens when you do um, per core like or per ratio overclocking? Like, what happens? Like, what happens? Um, what could happen? Like, what if the scheduler um, leverages a worse core? And tries to run it alongside other cores at 5.3 gigahertz in a three core workload. And you BSOD. Like, how do you know that your thread scheduler won't select like one bad core or like two bad cores, and all of a sudden your 5.3 gigahertz three core overclock now no, no longer works when it worked like minutes ago because you your CPU decided to use two other cores? Like, that's. <laughs> That introduces a lot of um, a lot of extra work in testing. Now, again, we revert back to that thing I said earlier on, which is some people don't give a fuck, which is completely fine. If you don't care about like random BSODs or the potential for them, then then I understand that this would mean nothing to you because you'd just be like, oh, I don't care. I'll just reboot the computer. To that, I say, okay. I mean, fair enough. Like, fine. I BSOD. I'll reboot, dude. Okay, fair enough. Um, so, this is my first problem. You have no idea which cores are leveraged. So, you don't know which cores in the, the ratio overclocking you're, you're actually running at this frequency. You're just saying that three of your cores are running at that frequency, but you have eight cores. So, to test them would mean cores one and two with cores three, then core four, then core 5, then core 6, then core 7, then core 8. And then you'd have to go back to core 1 uh, and 3, plus 4, plus 5, plus 6, plus 7, plus 8. Then it's core 1, plus 4, plus 5. You get the point. It's a lot of, like, unreasonable testing to validate that all of your cores, or all of the, the ratios you set, are viable and applicable to all of your individual cores. That's the problem. You see, if you had eight cores, and, oh no, that's even a horrible example. If you had, if you had three cores, and you said that at, with three, so if you have a, a let's say quad core, if you had a quad core CPU, and you said with four cores enabled, I will run four gigahertz. With two cores enabled, I'll run 4.5. With one core enabled, I'll run like 4.8. That's a lot easier to test because now even it's still a lot of work, but now you can actually narrow it down and be like, I'll test core one with four point eight, I'll test core two with four point eight, I'll test core three with four point eight, core four with four point eight, and then I'll test cores one and two, cores one and three, cores one and four, cores two and three, cores two and four, and now and then cores like three and four. And now you've had now you have all your data you need. Now you've got all you've got all the data. Now you know exactly which cores you know if what your individual cores can run at max out in two a two core ratio. With regards to clock speed, you know what the one core max is, you know what the all core max is. So four cores, you can do it. With this, with a 16 core, 24 thread CPU, the work becomes exponential. Right? Becomes exponential. Because I can't, I, I don't know the, the mathematical um, relationship, or what, what you would call it from a scientific perspective, but the work becomes exponential because now with, with 16 cores, the amount of combinations possible becomes like, like, scary it becomes like a scary amount of combinations like it will go from like testing like 10 combinations to testing like like 250 or something like that like it'll it'll go crazy like you'll just so much work that you can't really justify doing it and by that point you probably just end up not stress testing appropriately because you can't right so i know intel does set a one core ratio and like a four core ratio but their ratios are extremely conservative. So, if you want to overclock, dude, no, no motherfucker out there is doing a 5.21 core ratio. I, I could fucking do anyone could do that, dude. Yeah, if you, dude, f there you go, free performance. Dude. If you have, if you have a five gigahertz all core overclock on your on your older like, CPU, just set a ratio that says 
eight cores run at 5.0 and one core runs at 5.2. Dude, I promise you that's stable. That's stable. But number one, two, 200 megahertz in a one core application. Like, what are you doing? Superpower? Um, you're running Superpower then? I, I guess you are. I, I, whatever. Like, if you want to, if you want to, like, benchmark, you, you won't even, like, again, in a daily workload, you wouldn't want to waste your time trying to find minutia like that. But in a benchmark, it wouldn't require you to even be that, like, um, pedantic. So, if you were just benchmarking, like, Superpy then, right, and you wanted to use one core at the max ratio, do, do whatever you want then. Because it doesn't matter. Because if it crashes in other situations, or if it crashes, like, once a day, or crashes, like, if it crashes, like, half, half the times you attempt to run something, but it passes half the other times, you can still run your benchmark. And it does have to be stable. But if you're going to do a daily system, why would you go through the effort of trying to set a one core ratio at a max limit when any one core application that you would use on a daily basis is like fucking Microsoft Word or like Excel or like Discord? Like, why would you need your CPU to run Discord on one core at like 5.2 gigahertz? Like, roughly speaking, but why? What's the point? Why would you waste your time? Like, there's absolutely no reason to it. Um, unless you're like just have to like you just have to have it like you just have to know that your cpu is running at its absolute like red line like right you're like redlining it um so that's one aspect of it the second aspect of it which i find even worse is that how do you know that if you set a ratio overclock that when a certain core is leveraged at a given at, at your given at your set voltage at a given frequency that's higher than your all core so at a aggressive frequency how do you know that whichever core your cpu selects to run at that exacerbated frequency has a strong enough interconnect to the ring that won't affect your imc stability when communicating with your ram because your cores are what access your imc to process the work from your ram so or process the data that comes from your RAM to do the work. So why, why would you even want to risk it? Because you'd have to test so much. Like you'd have to stress test so much and do so many different. Like it's so much testing. I can't even fathom like why you would even think of doing it. Like I same with RTLs and IOS. So now let's get to that. So with DDR5, like why would you try? So this is this is something you have to keep in mind when you make any adjustment. And if you recall the last video, what did I say is my testing parameter? I said like 15 minutes of burn test, Y cruncher, or uh, Linpack, load cycling, or well, load cycling on Linpack and, and burn test, but Y cruncher would just run Y cruncher and then run it again, run it again. Why would you, like, my testing is 15 minutes once, 15 minutes reboot, 15 minutes after cold boot. I can tell you right now that I am nice. I am a very very reasonable very optimistic person because there are a lot of overclockers out there that will tell you that what i just said is completely dangerous like not dangerous but completely um unreliable that's a good word like they'll tell you that 15 minutes of stress testing to determine IMC stability is just not enough like one test first boot one test reboot and then one test cold boot it's not enough they'll be like no you gotta re you gotta cold boot like 10 times dude imagine Imagine having to retest every single voltage and frequency, oh sorry, voltage and timing adjustments you make on a DDR5 or DDR4 configuration on Alderlec and having to retest the IMC every time. So imagine you had a profile stable, right? You had it perfectly dialed in, secondaries and primaries, and your and your TCK was low, so your so your um, tertiary is trained in like fairly tight, like relatively tight. So you had like fairly respectable tertiaries, like not too bad. Um, you could you could probably drop them a few ticks and be safe. You probably just boot up would work. Um, you could retest the IMC once and then you could stress test and it'd be fine. More than likely, you can always the tertiaries are just like the secondaries. They have headroom. They have inherent headroom. Always, always, always. They always have some headroom that you could work with, and you're almost always guaranteed some ticks on them. But to try and tighten them like super super far, where you get to territory where they start affecting like memory training or to tighten the RTLs and the IOLs or to adjust them. Now you're talking about 
literally adding so much work to your overclock that I can't fathom even thinking of doing it. Like, what what are you trying to achieve? Like, why why would you bother? Like, if if setting all of those could like literally require you to do a IMC disability retest um every single time you make an adjustment to try and see if the adjustment by the way let me tell you like changing some timings on all the like when you're already close to um the edge can destabilize your IMC so you have to change or you have to retest the IMC every time you make an adjustment like even even just the fact that you released uh, for, uh, MRC fast boot, so the fact that you disable MRC fast boot, and you you um intentionally ask your CPU to retrain the profile to test out the new settings, because obviously you have to you have to uh, retrain the profile um, properly when you're changing settings. Um, you could end up sitting there for hours just trying to restabilize something that was already stable. Now the argument could be like, yeah. Well, I'll just try, Dane, and then if it fucking fucks out, I'll just load my old profile back. Fair enough. True. And you should do that. You should always have a backup. So, a contingency plan. You should always have a profile that you know is rock-solid stable in the back burner just waiting for you. So that when you eventually give up, which you will, um, <laughs> you can just load it up and, and fucking start gaming again. Um, so, that's kind of my... my uh, that's what did I cover? So why I don't like VF? Wait, no, let's stop from the beginning. Why you shouldn't bother chasing benchmarks sometimes? Why um, intricate tuning is great for chasing benchmarks, but makes fuck all sense if you're trying to max out the daily stability and usability. Um, why? Um, and then what's, what's, what would I say the, the third thing I covered was? Um, oh, why VF curve doesn't make sense if you aren't super wealthy. Um, why ratio seeing doesn't, um, make sense on ADL at all. I mean, you could probably have a better time ratio seeing on Ryzen and, um, Comet Lake, for example. Actually, yeah, let me talk about that. I think that ratio seeing on Ryzen makes a lot more sense. Like... Like, so Ryzen Master will tell you what your cores are doing. They'll tell you what your core silicon is. They'll tell you your core five is your your best silicon. Well, they'll tell you that. Push that motherfucker to like whatever you want to do five gigahertz. Like, don't do core two. Core 2 is fucking trash. Like, they'll tell you. Intel won't tell you shit. And combined with that, AMD's boards will let you adjust each core individually. It's pretty cool stuff. I'll say that. AMD's, AMD's CPU architecture is very well thought out. I think AMD put a lot of, like, thought, like, critical thinking into, huh, like, what would happen if our users did this? Would this make sense? Could they do this, like, reliably? Ah, okay, makes sense. Because the court, now you know the core to core variation. So now you can easily set um, the per core ratios. And, and on top of that, with Ryzen, you know inherently, as a fact, as a rule, that CCX0 is always your better CCX. It's always your better CCX. So all it would require for you to do per CCX over OCing on Ryzen, Like, it's the rule. Like, you do... CCX0 is always going to be between, like, 50 and 100 megahertz higher than core uh, than CCX1. CCX1 is always going to be worse silicon. 
always on the on the uh 1500x and the 50x always um and then you had like i think you had like um different ccds on but you couldn't set, no you couldn't set ccd clocks though i don't think you could set ccd clocks on older ryzen i think you could always only set ccx clocks so that's fine but whatever so you set ccx zero to your higher frequency ccx one to a lower frequency and then the average would be the middle round and that would be your average frequency but that's that's how i ran my my 12 core as well with ryzen um and if you had the time because some guys do have the time you could viably do ratio OC on ryzen you could viably say the cpu core can do this much the cpu core does that much you could viably do it because you know which cores have the silicon that you want to leverage for the higher clocks right so i don't mind especially with pbo2 um is great like but pbo2 has its drawbacks like the fact that pbo i think inherently from what i spoke to someone very knowledgeable um in his testing he determined that that ryzen cpus do degrade over time under pbo not not by a huge amount but by enough to where you can notice it like maybe let's say let's say like 50 megahertz a year which is not a lot i mean think about this if you owned a ryzen cpu that could boost up to like let's say 4.55 all core out of the box under a heavy workload in the year's time you could do like 4.5 gigahertz and then in two years time you do like 4.45 and then it would actually take longer as it as the uh, degradation like it, it it'll degrade a slower a slow rate so maybe in like the next year you would be at like 4.425 and then like you know what I'm, but by that point the cpu is so old that you don't really care right so it isn't like a sin that amd that amd allow pbo to kind of self-degrade the cpu <laughs> but um it is a thing so uh it is something to consider because i i i regard as i regard the person i speak to uh i regard their their um take on it as 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 true um i respect their opinion and they did read a tsmc documentation that specified the actual tolerance of uh 7nm or TSMC, tsmc n7 and yeah so i i trust this person when they say pbo is is kind of like suicide <laughs> same with um even stock on ryzen is kind of like suicide because you are going to lose frequency over time like as the years go by we're talking months not like years like after a year you might see like 50 megahertz gone it's a year though right so it is a long time like imagine buying your cpu today and on jan 15th 2023 you've lost 50 megahertz on your stock or core most people probably wouldn't care that much because it's like i've used my cpu for a year i've lost 50 megahertz 50 megahertz is like half a percent i don't care like and you shouldn't care because sometimes we get a bit carried away with the stuff um but yeah so that's ryzen um and comet lake i guess you could probably more viably comet lake would fall into a similar problem with alder lake but comet lake doesn't have the same problems with the imc just forgetting how to read the ram <laughs> so that's one thing like the, the whole the whole like the whole scary scenario where your imc just can't read the ram properly and you're just losing um like a like your, your data is just uh your data just being uh like your basic is erroring and uh your imc is calc making calculation errors and um it's just the whole system is destabilized that that whole free like a uh, freak scenario on, on alder lake that occurs when you aren't rock solid stable is just not as pronounced on comet lake to where i think on comet lake you could viably just do this kind of thing um in fact i would say on comet lake do your ram first because more than likely the vccs and the vci o rails aren't going to affect your uh system agent as much i mean sorry your, your ring clock as much io will affect ring clock but even then io doesn't roll over like it does on well there's no io on all the lake but sa the rail that does help ri uh, the ring stability is not going to roll over like it does on oh well, it's not gonna roll over like it does on all the lake on rocket on comet lake so i think on stuff like rocket lake and comet lake i actually forgot about rocket lake lol i completely skipped it 
what? I like completely was like oblivious to like rocket tech exists. Oh, it does exist. There was a level gen. I'm not even a header. I just forgot about it. Like fuck. Pff, poor rocket tech. But anyway, so I think on rocket tech, comet like co coffee lake, like any older CPU, uh, CPU architecture Intel, I think it's viable to try ratio seeing if you can. Uh, but I think on older lake, just skip it if you want to have your system rock solid stable for daily use. I just don't see a reason to gamble anything because again like i said gaming work applications you're not going to require a minute uh, performance bump that requires an exponential amount of effort like an exponentially um greater amount of effort whereas if you were benchmarking you could make those changes run them and if if they aren't rock solid it doesn't fucking matter because you're benchmarking Right, you're not trying to be rock solid. Like, like when I ran 3D mock, um, I was running my my 1500X at like 1.45 volts at like 4.8 gigahertz, like, or well, 4.85 on the one CCX and 4.75 on the other CCX. When would you ever run that daily? I stress tested. Why would I stress test that shit? No point. Like, that's stupid. So, um, yeah, like I I think that yeah, that's my take on on the intricacies of overclocking. Like the the those those settings that. When people see you haven't, like, exhausted them or, like, uh, explored them, they're like, oh, maybe you should try that out. Like, maybe you shouldn't run fixed or core. Like, maybe try, like, no. Because why give yourself a headache when the potential benefits are so minute that you wouldn't even care? Like, the amount of distress having your system crash would cause you, potentially, is a lot worse than having to settle for, like, 5.1 gigahertz on the peak cores. Versus like 5.1 all core and then like 5.5 single core. Like 5.5 single core is fucking nothing. It's it's a nothing burger. It's fucking completely just irrelevant. Just what's the point? And if your argument is, oh, but I want to run Super Pie, Then fucking create a profile for Super Pie and don't even stress test it. Don't even try and like say it makes sense. It doesn't make sense. It's just in that particular scenario, it's like you need to max out one core. You don't care if it's daily usable. So... But you're admitting that, that the actual um, setting is compromised. But you concede that because in the scenario it makes sense. Right? But I don't really like how this whole like VF curve and like um, per core, like per, like, uh, like ratio overclocking thing is being pushed on people. Like, oh, do this or do that. Just like fixed core overclocks have been the standard for most users and has been the most reliable way of running your system for the longest time. So why reinvent the wheel? Like, just because we can set one core to run at 5.5 gigahertz doesn't mean we should do it, like, just because we can. Like, because there is a due process to testing that. And to be honest, theoretically speaking, you could probably do, like, a thing where you have um, a fixed ratio on, like, your E cores and P cores, but then you have it be like, it's a fixed ratio for eight cores, so eight E cores or P cores on, on 12 rocket, for example, but the one, but a one core ratio can be like 5.5 in the P cores, or like 4.5 in the E cores, and then you test each E core and each P core at that one core max boost. That could work. So, if you really need This is reliable. Just uh, just set an all core conservative ratio and have a one core ratio that maxes or red lines. Because all it would require is to test each individual core. At that frequency um, in a given workload uh, with a given voltage. So, how would you do something like that? How, more than likely, what you would do is you would go into BIOS and set, like, if you're doing uh, 1200K, you would set, like, a one core ratio of, like, 5.5 gigahertz um, 
set a two core, three core, four core, eight core, all at your conservative, like 5.1 or 5.0 or whatever you're at. And then you would maybe use like process lasso to like um, kind of park all your cores and set a workload to use one core. And then see if um, at your given voltage, at your set voltage, one core conducting that workload is stable. And then you'd move to the next core and the next core and the next core. You can actually pretty easily. You can only set a one core ratio once in BIOS and then use process lasso to like to like park each core afterwards. So you would like try core one, park the rest. Try core two, park the rest. Try core three, park the rest. And you go down the line like that. And then you could feasibly test a one core boost, like not so diff not so like not so impossibly. Like you could probably do that, to be honest. Yeah, that's probably a very um reasonable way of doing it. But I would say the whole three core ratio thing, oh fuck that shit. Like no. Cause <laughs> you'd have to test all the possible three core configurations. That's the issue. Um so yeah, that's just my thoughts on the shit. Um I hope this made some sense. And yeah. So until next time.